super cool. Let me show you what project we got today. So this homeowner is going to be installing a future fire pit. And what he wants is a three quarter inch gas outlet. On the other side of this wall is a, is a large crawl space. So he wants a gas outlet as far as he can get into this crawl and out. I already went in there and kind of poked out a little, um, a little seamy here. So I kind of get my bearings. So we're going to be coming out about right in here. And then what, what he'll do later is he'll dig a trench and we'll do some underground gas piping for him later. But for now, step one is to get tied into this gas main in the crawl space, get him stubbed out here, get him a gas valve right here. Uh, leak test everything and make sure that we're good to go. So here's the gas meter. You can just stay down there. We'll be turning it off right here at the valve on this gas meter and making our connections in the crawl space. For the house can see what we're working with. To that inch and a half outside and said it goes into the building here this is where it where it comes into this crawl space here but it shoots on down here this is actually a nice little added bonus for us so i was prepared to take it from that larger connection but whoever plumbed this house did something really smart they brought the inch and a half over here and they built a little manifold system with t's and individual cst lines that went off to each individual gas appliance so what we'll do this is just a gas fireplace, so right at the end T here, we'll add our own T, and we'll also put in a CSST line, and we'll run it right over here, convert it back to black iron, stub through, and on the outside we'll give them a valve. We can pre-put this together for sure, because we'll attach the CSD, shove it through the hole. We can pre-put all this together, because from the outside we can thread it onto there. And we can not put this stuff together because it's so tight to the wall in there. We just got to kind of got to piece that together. So we're going to put that in there like that. That goes into crawl with this. This goes into crawl with this. So here's the rule on turning off gas. Act like you're the, the uh, utility owner here, which is, for, in this case, it's PSE, Puget Sound Energy, and you haven't paid your bill. So what you'll do is you'll match this hole up with this hole up, act like you're putting a lock on it, and turning it off and locking the homeowner out if they didn't pay their bill. So that's kind of kind of the rule of thumb on these ones. see me doing a lot of taping and untaping and the reason why I'm doing that is I'm trying to keep most of that gas in the line um, and you may be thinking how is tape going to keep back uh, any kind of pressurized gas in the line and the answer to that is gas pressure is very 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 low uh, you can just hold it back with your finger you can hold it back with a piece of tape um, to put it in perspective gas pressure in residential homes is around 11 inches of water column and the reason why they talk water column is because water column is less than because um, we're talking less than one we're talking less than one psi so one psi equals 28 inches of water column
These are like poisons, really tough. Um, I can do it about it, you know. I'm going to turn it back I'm
put my, put my hack on this, okay? Manufacturer says use their tubing cutters. Or you can use, uh, you can buy some CSST. Uh, they look like copper tubing cutters. But they always leave, they're not good. Uh, if you've done any of this, you know what I'm talking about. So what I do is I cut a nice square cut with the porter man. Come take a look. My goal is just to get down on the other side of one of these ridges, just nice and square. That is way better than those copper, those uh, tubing cutters, because the tubing cutters always leave that last little bit, always leave this little jagged edge, and that jagged edge causes leaks. Manufacturers, you may want to just say don't use the cutters until everybody use those ported mats because that is just just a perfect look. It's not even cut my rubber glove. It's just it's, it's perfect. But this kind of gives you a hint of what this does. This nut, this nut goes over those rings, and as it, as you tighten this nut down on the other other end, it's pulling, it's pulling those rings and the pipe, and sandwiching, sandwiching this nice clean edge right there. Ooh, almost lost it. Almost lost it. Sandwiching that into the receiver part of this the tapered part of that so that stainless steel that stainless steel ridge right there will flatten out and make a really nice seal Vibrate everything, wiggle everything, so it just seats really nice, find it center, find it's true. And now it's now it's sandwiching that stainless steel corrugation that little bit that was on the other side of the rings there it's driving it into the tapered receiver end. I want to go right there because when I was outside, I measured from this vent. I know where I'll be and want to be kind of centered in a panel out there so I don't hit a, hit a seam. 
I'm gonna drill this, then we'll go get a hole saw set up and drill from the outside in with the hole saw. Uh, probably a one and three eighths. That should work. You may think that's stupid, but that is actually, uh, these impacts are designed for short burst. Uh, whenever you're drilling holes with impact, uh, do that multi-trigger thing. Trust me, try it. You'll love it. It goes to the material tremendously well. Okay, we're going to set up the hole saw on the uh, chuck drill. So we'll just keep that there for now. And then let's go drill a hole from outside in. And then we'll have a target. Should be okay. We like to refer to it as money. I think I am going to go out and get one wood shim though. Put it right in there so this nipple's coming out perfectly straight before I two hole strap it. But we'll get all this piped and just that'll be probably the last thing we do is just put a shim in there, put a two hole strap right there, just lock it in, lock it in. a little bit more so we don't
Take a good look at this. Take a good look at this. Put your two rings around that. I'll do it again. Put your two rings around that first ridge. Okay. Put your nut back over the rings. Now the rings are locked. And now look. That piece goes inside the pipe. You got that little tapered receiver in right there. And this nut, as it threads onto here, is going to jam these rings all the way, all the way to that material, which is sandwiching this little bit of stainless steel right here on that tapered smooth edge right there. Important to tighten the nut too, the nut, not the material. We're not trying to, we're not trying to, we're just trying to sandwich that stainless steel to the receiver part, the tapered part of this stationary fitting. Don't take the stationary fitting and do a bunch of twisting. That's not a, that's not, that doesn't make for a great joint. Worst case scenario, I suppose you could do it. In all cases, try to, try to just work the nut because that's, that nut is just jamming those two half rings closer to that tapered part and it's making a great seal. And what I'm doing right now is I made I made a mark on the piping and I made a mark on the stationary fitting. I want those to line up the best I can because then um, it'll when I move this back over into place, it'll be right where it needs to be. The memory of the pipe will be perfect. Now this and it is nice. Nice. We'll put a couple clamps up here. We'll put a couple clamps on there. And we'll go out front and finish it up. Before I spend too much time uh, tweaking out on making this look beautiful, I'm going to go out and actually put the gas valve on because I don't want air coming into the system right now. So let's uh, jump out there real quick and take care of that. I'm actually going to turn the gas on a little bit too.
hear it whistling Dixie out of there. Mm-hmm. secure then we will come back out here and purge and give this just a little bit more tweak uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go turn the gas on we're going to go purge out that valve we'll put the cap on it we'll turn the gas all the way on we'll come back in here and we'll soap test everything look for leaks and we'll go visit each appliance inside the house turn it on and make sure that each gas appliance still works good and I'm hoping from all that tape action that we don't have to purge the air out of every single gas appliance in here uh, or that whole effort was uh, for nothing. But I've had really good success with taping off in the past, so I think we're going to go to each appliance and it's going to fire off just fine. I've never done it, but I've been told that when you when you turn off a gas meter like this, um, turn it back on. Just don't go full blast. Uh, go very slow. Let it let it energize. Then open up all the way because uh, supposedly it can damage some diaphragms inside of it, but. Sometimes I have in the past just went wide open and you do hear like a pop. Um, so uh, from, from someone telling me that and hearing that pop from now on, I just don't want that. That'd be a bad day. So you can you can hear, hear it go. I just heard it energize. Now I go all the way. There we go. That is all the way on. Parallel with the pipe. Why does that smell like weed a little bit? Huh? No? Kinda. Camera guy says no. Kinda. Camera guy says skunk weed. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know how well this shit works, but it, I mean it does work. But let's try to simulate a leak right here and see what see what a leak actually looks like. How about that? Look at that. I'm barely in on this thing. It's not even leaking. Boom. That's how much pressure a gas line has in it. Look at that seals it up. So guys, quit going so hard on these fittings. You, let's see if we can simulate a leak here. There it is. There's a leak. Pause on the sensor. Hear this striker going off. Just stopped. It's on. Ah! Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so tape job does work. See, that would have been a bummer if we would have had to pull this whole stove out and break it. So. <clears throat> I'm really happy. It's definitely going to be gas failure. 
So we're gonna break this nut right here and get a little gas there. You ready? I can feel the heat. I'm releasing the PNT valve right now. I can feel the heat. We got fire and we're good. Yeah. So instead of making the homeowner turn the heater onto the house and pump a bunch of heat in the house, I'm just going to break it right here at the furnace and know that I got good gas here. So when they do go to fire the furnace, maybe tonight, but we're warm in this country right now, so this might not fire for days. But I'll just go ahead and make sure that we got good gas right there. <laughs> I may over dramatize stuff, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. There was quite a bit of air there. This is my bike there. Imagine you just pass so. <laughs> Imagine you just keep videotaping me thinking I'm messing. I'm joking. That'd be crazy. <laughs> there you go. Natural gas, uh, the additive they put in it is um, uh, really sweet smelling. So you know it's natural gas if, it, if you're smelling some sweetness in it. Okay, uh, one more fireplace, and we are done. Found it. I think. I think there's two, right? I think it's the first one. I can hear it. You see it? Okay, we are 100% done. All plants have been purged, all plants have worked, and it's time to go get paid by the homeowner. I need my phone to do it. <laughs>